that's the goal. We are going to copy uh, this building or this slice of a building. So uh, we don't have a building. So I will uh, create two grid lines. Um, and then there will be a, a steel column uh, here, another steel column there. And between these two steel columns, there will be some beams. And then we will have uh, all that stuff here uh, because the goal is to create a, a double skin facade. And then I will give you some. I will explain you some great features uh, to create uh, custom curtain walls. Okay, so so far uh, we have to work with the storefront. We uh, click on the storefront, and here we have mullions and the uh, vertical and horizontal mullions. Okay, that's good. I showed you how to change uh, the layout of those mullions. But if you want to create something like that, something that it's not flat, something that has volume. Uh, I'll show you how to do this because we have to work with Revit families and probably with uh, uh, Revit masses, and then we have to divide the mass and then to apply the family. Okay, I'll explain that uh, probably on, on Friday. But today uh, we're going to start this. So on level zero, let me see uh, the east elevation. Okay, so for the east elevation, we have grid uh, A, grid B, and uh, here we have different levels. We have level negative 12. Uh, so that will be the basement floor, level zero. It's a ground floor. And then we have uh, different uh, levels here. Okay. So uh, that's my level uh, zero. And I have two grids, uh, one, two, and A and B. Uh, the um, distance between these two grid lines is 24. It's 24 and one inches and one uh, inch. So let's uh, make it uh, 24 uh, inches. No, 24 feet, sorry, and zero inches. Yes, four. And now the other one is uh, 25 and two inches. Um, so again, Let's make it uh, 25. Okay, so now we have a grid uh, 24 uh, by uh, 25. It doesn't matter, okay? So it's just to have a number that I can, uh, I can remember. And uh, now from level zero, uh, we have to... Oh, okay, let's start. Uh, from the beginning. So the beginning will be level negative 12. So on level negative 12, uh, what do we have? Uh, we have uh, footings. So we can go to structure. Um, uh, let's say, let's try isolated footings first. Uh, this one and that one. And this is the facade. Okay, so on the facade, I will use a wall a structure wall, and it can be, or it has to be a retaining wall. Okay, this retaining, it can be, I don't know, if you have 300 millimeters, 300 millimeters is around um, one foot or 12 inches. Okay, so I, I don't know, uh, probably because uh, I don't know why, but Revit thinks that if I'm Spaniard, uh, I should use a millimeter. So I don't know. Anyway, um, so that's the facade. And then uh, let me see where uh, we are. Okay, so that has to go from level base offset. I don't want that. Uh, up to level zero and no offset. This is it. And now I need a footing here. So if I go to the wall footing, I have to select the wall and I have the footing there. Um, I think it's good having the same size for two footings. So I can either, uh, 
Select this one. Uh, what's the size of this footing? It's uh, the width. It's four inches. No, four feet. And this is six. The foundation thickness. Okay, so it's one foot and six inches. I'm going to uh, select this one and the thickness. I want one foot and six inches. Apply. Okay. Okay. So now they are both the same. Uh, thickness, this one and that one. And uh, what's uh, left here, uh, we have to connect this to that one and we can do that using beams. So I'm going to use a uh, structure, sorry, uh, the beam. And we have the concrete a rectangular beam. I think the 12 by 24. So I've got this one and this one and that one. Now from the east elevation, again, um, I'm going to edit type and I'm going to duplicate because I want the 12 by 18. And now uh, this is not two feet, is one and six inches. Okay, so again, if I had done uh, this template uh, with this new uh, beam, so I wouldn't have to change it every time I do this. Okay, so this is a 12 by 18. Because, yeah, the beam is not thicker than the footing or shouldn't be. Okay, uh, so this is it. We have the basic structure here, uh, the basic uh, um, foundations, uh, the curtain wall, the curtain wall, the retaining wall. And now on level two, on level zero, uh, I have to start building. Well, I can do that on level, okay, on level negative 12, I will build uh, columns, uh, concrete columns, 12 by 12. I place it here and uh, where the hell is the, the column? Okay, as always, it's bad. Uh, the top level has to be level zero. I don't want any offset. And there you go. And now I can copy uh, this one. Copy here. Okay. So now I have uh, everything that is on the basement. Uh, I use concrete because it can be exposed to water or whatever. So concrete is safer than steel or wood for everything that is uh, underground or on the on the basement. Okay, so uh, we have the foundations, uh, isolated foundations for the columns. Uh, wall foundations uh, for the walls, uh, beams uh, connecting uh, foundations. And um, now on level zero, I'm going to need a floor. So I can, if this is, uh, so I can go to structure, I can go to structural floor. And uh, we can use this one. Uh, in commercial buildings, we can use this concrete with a metal deck. And now I'm going to do this. Level 15, no, it has to be level zero. So now it's on level zero. I can attach uh, this wall uh, to this floor. That will look better. Okay, so all this is gonna be underground. Here to protect this wall, and we have to use the same element. We have to use the um, painting, waterproof painting. Then we need to protect this painting with this uh, a drainage mat. 
and then we need to create that parity, and then we need a train, uh, uh, yeah, train five here. So all the stuff that we have done uh, before, okay? I'm not gonna do it, uh, but you have to do it again. Uh, so remember that uh, all these elements that we have here, uh, it's the same elements that we did for the for the concrete building and for the for the other building. Okay, um, now uh, that's the floor on level zero, and I can start working with structural beams made of steel. So, what beams do we have here? Uh, structure, sorry, structural columns, not beams. Structural columns. And uh, we have this W shape, um, 250 and 49, 250 and 73. Let's use this one. And uh, let's put it here. And again, let's look at the 3D view. It's not in the right place as always. So it has to be from level zero to level 15 and no offset. There we go. Okay. So now on level zero, I can select this one and copy. Now I copy here. Okay, so I have this module and uh, now I need beams and then I need uh, uh, other columns. So on level 15 now, on level 15, I need to work with beams, with steel beams, structural framing. It's not concrete. It has to be the beam, which one? Uh, let's use this uh, 12, uh, by 22. So from, if uh, you want to get rid of this, there are different options, okay? So if you zoom in and uh, you see this uh, this way, uh, you can click here, thin lines, and you see thin lines, or we can always increase the scale to one half. Okay, so the uh, larger the scale, uh, the less, or the, yeah, the thinner uh, the lines we have here. So it depends, but one, one half, uh, it's good for a call out. I think one fourth, it's good for this kind of thing. So, okay, so I'm going to use thin lines and it will be better. So the beam is from this point to uh, that point, okay? So I need another one from here to here, and then another one. Here, and finally. This. So let's go to the 3D, and that's it. And now, once we have all that stuff, if we have the fine details, I'm going to use the same scale, one fourth. Uh, so this is the concrete floor with the metal deck. It has like this shape. And uh, here, we're going to need another floor uh, like this, okay? Uh, so on level 15, I'm going to work another uh, with, with another structural floor, another uh, deck uh, like this one, and then another rectangle. Like this. Let's go to the 3D. And well, this is not. Okay, so this is not good. Usually the, um, uh, the beam, it's underneath the slab. So I can either move the slab up or move the beam 
uh, down. Um, I think I'm going, I'm going to move uh, the beam down, all the beams. Uh, so the, we have to, I need to know the thickness of that slab first, annotate. It is eight and a half inches. Okay, so that means I'm going to do it uh, one by one. Uh, so if we uh, want to move the beam down, I can move it negative 8.5. This is the start. Negative. Okay, so you have to place the minus uh, before the zero. And then uh, the F, it's uh, negative 8.5. There you go, okay? So now the beam is just underneath uh, this. Uh, I don't know we have this gap, but anyway. Uh, so now if we select all the beams, uh, we can do the same. Uh, we can do the same uh, negative uh, 8.5 inches for the start level and for the end level uh, negative 8.5 inches. Uh, let's look at what we are doing. Uh, okay, so we have only one left. This one, negative 8.5, 8.6. Uh, and negative 8.5. Um, inches. There you go. Okay, so that's the right way. So we have the, the columns, then we have the uh, beams. Uh, the beams are varying the weight of the slab. So uh, the slab has to be above the beams. Now there's a, there are different ways to do that. So as you can see here, the column continues and the beams uh, ends here. It can be the other way. So we can have a, we can interrupt the column and then we can make a continued beams. Uh, from the structural point of view, uh, we need to make that decision because it affects the structure. We are not calculating anything, but if we are working with a structural engineer, uh, someone has to make that decision. It can be the architect. No, I want the columns to be continued or it can be the structural engineer, but that decision, uh, matters. Okay, so in this case, I'm just continuing the, the column and the beam is resting on the, the column. So once we have that, uh, I think we can copy. Uh, so I can uh, copy all this and uh, I can copy this one, uh, remove constraints and I can copy it here. So that's the basement. Uh, this is the first floor. That would be the second floor. That's the third floor. And then there will be something different for the roof. Okay. Uh, today, I'm going to focus on this, okay, because I want to design that fashat. Uh, so usually the first floor and the, and the roof, they are different. But uh, today, I'm going to focus just on, on this fashat here. And then we will do something different for the first floor. And probably on Friday, we'll do something different for the, for the roof. Um, okay. Uh, what's next? Uh, we have to design the first uh, curtain wall. So to design the first curtain wall, uh, we have to, um, uh, to create, yeah, the first curtain wall here. The name curtain wall is not something that it sounds uh, fancy. Oh, curtain wall. 
That is because the wall is hanging from the structure. Okay, so when we are going to create the curtain wall, but the curtain wall is not on this axis. This is the structural axis, the structural grid line. At the intersection of those grid lines, we have structural elements, but the curtain wall is hanging from uh, the, the slab or the floor. Okay, so I'm going to create a reference plane for the curtain wall. Uh, let's uh, make it... Uh, it's not a reference plane. I'm going to uh, create a model line first. Uh, how much is this gap? One inch, two inches. Well, let's make it two inches, okay? And uh, where is that uh, line? Okay, it's here. Uh, I think it's on level 15. Yeah. Okay, so I have this line two inches away. And then on this line, I'm going to create a reference plane. So on this reference plane, <laughs> I'm going to name it a uh, curtain wall. And now I can delete that one. Okay, so I want the curtain wall and 82 uh, inches is uh, too much for that gap, but uh, I want you to understand what we are doing. Probably one inch would be enough, but uh, now it's uh, two inches. So it's two inches away, not from the structure, it's two inches away from the slab, from the concrete slab. Okay. So now I can use the uh, storefront architecture, uh, wall, storefront, and uh, I'm going to start here. Uh, let me see what it does. Okay, so you see how um, the storefront wall is centered uh, to this. If I want to change it, I want to delete that wall. Then I go back to level 15. And I select the wall, storefront. Um, okay, by default, you see that the storefront is always in the wall center line. Okay. Uh, that's not what I want actually. So I'm going to do this. I need to see the thickness of this uh, curtain wall. So I'm going to go to annotate, align. Okay, so it's uh, six inches. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, I'm going to move uh, this reference plane. Three inches outwards. Okay, because I want the inner part, the inner face of the curtain wall, I want to be here. Then uh, the center will be three inches away, and then the outside it will be three inches away outwards. Okay, so I'm going to move uh, this uh, plane uh, one, two, three inches. Okay, and now if I uh, go to architecture wall storefront, and if I click here on that uh, reference plane, I think it will work. Yes. Okay, so you see what I have done. I have created this reference plane. Uh, this is in the mid point of the curtain wall. And we have this gap here of two inches between the curtain wall and, uh, and uh, the slab. Okay, so as uh, you can see here, uh, the curtain wall is hanging from the slab. 
if we go to the right view, there's a gap between the curtain wall and uh, that slab. And uh, why is that? Uh, because if I want to, if uh, this building had a more floor, more stories, uh, that wall will be uninterrupted by the, uh, the concrete slab. You see? So the wall, the curtain wall is continuous. And it's not interrupted by the slab. So that's why you need a gap between the, the slab itself and the, the curtain wall. Um, I'm going to, in this, okay, I'm going to create the third floor. Uh, so that uh, I'm going to move this level to 45. And then this uh, level would be level 45. Okay, because I want uh, 15 inches. Uh, this is 15, 30, and 45. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy uh, all this stuff. Uh, the beams and the concrete slab, I'm going to copy to the third floor. Because that's what I want, okay? Um, Well, I have to copy the columns too. There you go. Okay. So I have the uh, columns, the slab, and this curtain wall. Uh, uh, the top constraint, I can go up to level uh, 45. There you go. Okay, so the curtain wall, it's something continuous and it's not interrupted by uh, this. So that's the, that is where the curtain wall is. So it's not interrupted by the slab, so it's not interrupted by the building structure. It's hanging from the slab or it's hanging from the, from the building structure. Okay, so. Uh, that's it. Uh, but this is not beautiful, actually. Okay, so if we look at uh, those details, you see that, uh, okay, so look at this. This is a slab, this is a structural slab of this uh, black element here. And here we have the false floor, and here we have the false ceiling. Uh, this is a technical floor. So in office spaces, it's good because we can have all the cables and all the electricity wires and all that stuff. And so we need this gap between the spectral element and the floor itself, the thing that we are seeing. And then for the fold ceiling, it's the same. Here we have the fold ceiling. So all the mechanical systems and the uh, ducts and all that stuff is, uh, is there, okay? So there is always something ugly here between the slab and the false ceiling that uh, we need to cover uh, with, the, with the curtain wall, okay? So it's something that we don't want to see because it's not beautiful. Um, so that's the design of the first curtain wall. Uh, we have to keep that in, in mind, okay? So let me explain. Look at this, we have this mullion. So that's the concrete slab. Uh, we have this first mullion. So we always have like another mullion uh, here to hide the slab and to hide the beam. Okay, uh, can we do that? Uh, yes, we can. So if we go to, if we select the wall, the curtain wall, um,
Okay, so here in architecture, uh, we can select the curtain grid. Okay, so if we uh, create a mullion here, that's what I mean. Okay, so uh, all these elements that we have here, they don't even have to be transparent. It can be uh, different, it doesn't have to be transparent because we don't want transparency here. What are we looking? Uh, we're looking at uh, a beam and a concrete slab. So it doesn't make sense. Okay, so that's why I create this uh, mullion here, another mullion there. And now uh, if I select all these elements, I filter, I create curtain panels or I select only curtain panels. And um, I have to unpin uh, the curtain panel. Okay, so now if I unpin the curtain panel and it not, it's not glazed, it can be something solid. There you go. Okay, so this element, it's part of the curtain wall, but it doesn't have to be transparent. It's even better if it's not transparent because what we see uh, through this glass here, it's not something that we are proud of. So we, we want to hide it. Uh, so you will see these kind of things. Well, you can see that detail. If we have different sections. Yes, yeah, so there is always something that it's not transparent here. You see that it's a part, it's part of the curtain wall, but it's hiding. Uh, all that stuff that we have here. No, because this is something that we don't want to show. So this is what I'm doing in this. So I'm uh, creating all this as a, as an opaque uh, part of the curtain wall. But uh, apparently I have to go one by one. I have to filter. I have to select curtain panels, apply, by an object. Filter, panel, unpin, solid. Filter, panel, unpin, solid. Uh, so that's it. We have a curtain wall, uh, we have glass, and then we have an opaque part just hiding all the stuff that I need here. Okay, so I hide the beam, I hide the concrete slab, everything. And um, you, you can design this uh, curtain wall, so I'm not designing it, and I'm, uh, I just created this part here, but you can do things with those uh, mullions, okay? So if you want to delete uh, uh, those mullions, you can, or if you want to create uh, another curtain grid, but only at one segment, uh, we can do it uh, here and there. Okay, so we can uh, change the, uh, the shape of the, of the curtain wall. <laughs> But the important thing is that this part, uh, the part that connects two different floors, it's something opaque. It's not made of glass. It doesn't make sense. Okay. So that will be the first uh, curtain wall. Uh, here, uh, we would need something similar. 
And here we will need something similar, okay? So I'm doing just in this floor, but every time we go from uh, this element to from this floor to, uh, to that floor, uh, I have to create this uh, this kind of opaque element here. Okay? Um, but um, so that will be the first uh, the first curtain wall. How can we hang it here? Nobody does it. I mean, nobody uh, working with Revit. Uh, we just have the curtain walls. Click curtain wall, straight wrong, and that's it. But we are uh, going uh, farther. And uh, I, I want to show you how to fix uh, curtain walls uh, to, the, um, uh, to the slab. So that's why we have to go to this detail here. Okay. So here we have the, uh, the mullion. And there's uh, this, we have this element that it's fixed to the concrete slab. And then we have that element uh, another element that it's fixed to the to the mullion. And probably if you go to a curtain wall uh, company, uh, probably they will provide you with this detail, with this uh, fitting element. Um, but we're going to create it on, on our own. But first, I think we have to, to understand how it works. Okay, so it's something that it's connected to the concrete. And it's something that it's connected to the to the mullion. Um, okay, uh, I'm going to draw it, and then I'll. Okay, so that's the element that we need. Then we need to bolt this to the uh, concrete slab, and then uh, the mullion will be between these two planters, or. And then uh, we will bolt the mullion to that. The mullion is hanging uh, from, uh, from that element. Um, I'm going to do it again uh, because, well, I made up my mind. But now I will adjust uh, the size of this element uh, to the size of the mullion. So let's go to level 15. OK, so this is just uh, the first attempt. But now I'm going to adjust uh, the size of this element to the size of the, of the mullion. Uh, we have to understand here what we are doing. So I'm going to uh, uh, place this uh, shaded element. Uh, okay, that's the curtain wall, uh, that's the slab, and that's the, the gap, okay? And this is the mullion here. So let's do it again. I'm going to go to architecture, component, modeling place, a railing, support. Okay. And uh, if this is the mullion now, I'm going to use extrusion. I'm going to set this, uh, the work plane on level 15. And, uh, okay, let's do this. Um, I'm going to start here. This is uh, four one fourth. Okay, so let's uh, make it four. That's the width of the mullion because the important thing now is that the mullion is uh, can be within uh, these two elements. So I'm going to do this. And now the width is always one fourth. Then I go here. Uh, this was three inches, but we can make it uh, two inches, then one fourth. And then in this direction, I have to continue this here. Chamfer. One fourth. And two inches. Two. And there we go. Okay, so that's the basic case. And this is connected to this bottle to the flat. And the mullion is just uh, between these two elements. And then you can bolt uh, the mullion here. 
Um, I think I'm going to make it a little. I'm going to extend this to five inches. And the same thing with this and the same thing with this. And close the gap. Okay, so it's a very uh, simple shape. Uh, it's like this T element with two, with two vertical, so this bottom here, and then the movement will be open between these two elements. So I finish, and now I need to uh, give it the right position. So the right position for this will be here and there. And finish. Okay. Um, so every time we have a mullion, uh, we need one of those. So I need to copy this where all the mullions are, the vertical ones. Okay, so you see that we have those elements. So if we continue the mullion, uh, this element will hold uh, uh, the vertical mullion there. And now I have to copy this. I have to copy all these elements. Here. If I use the wireframe, uh, you see how we have the vertical mullion, and then we have this element holding the, the vertical mullion. Uh, I think I made them yep, too high. Well, it works, doesn't matter. Okay, but that is the idea. I have something that it's bolted to the slab and then this element is holding the, the vertical mullion uh, that way. So if we want to make it even better, uh, we can go to the uh, 3D view wireframe. Okay, so we have these elements there and we know uh, we need like rocks. I think the, the name of the uh, of those bolts are uh, rods. Yep, a rod is something like this. It's a something, it's a cylinder made of steel. And uh, this is a connection between two steel plates, uh, something like that, okay? So we need a rod that it's bolted to that element and then it's, it goes inside the, the concrete. So, I can go to uh, architecture, component, modeling place, railing, support. I'm going to set uh, the work plane on grid B. And uh, by extrusion, I'm going to create a circle here. Okay. Now I'm going to copy this circle or mirror. Here. 
here and copy. Here, click OK, and this is it. Okay, so we have these elements that are attached uh, to this, and then they are introduced inside. Uh, the concrete slab, like this. Okay, so it's the same thing as in this detail. Forget about this part, and it's this, okay? So we have this plate here, and then we have these rocks entering the, the concrete slab. So with this detail, I can fix uh, all these elements, all these mullions to the slab. Okay, if uh, this uh, curtain wall uh, continues, I mean, if we uh, go from level uh, zero to uh, level 30, uh, those elements will be holding uh, these mullions here. And on this floor, I need the same. I need these elements. This element is connected to this, and then it's holding the uh, the mullion here. Okay, understanding curtain walls is not easy. It's not just the curtain wall. No. Uh, there are a lot of uh, elements, tiny elements that are extremely expensive. By the way, so this element here that we have done in five minutes, maybe it costs. 50 or $60, okay? So uh, we need one of those per mullion, per vertical mullion, and probably per floor, okay? So uh, just this element, it's around $60. It's quite expensive, uh, building uh, with the curtain walls. But anyway, that's the idea, okay? So the curtain wall first is hanging from the structure, and uh, we need something that it's attached to the structure and that it's holding the, the vertical uh, mullions. So that will be the first skin. And uh, now we need the double skin. So the double skin is uh, more difficult or easier? Well, I don't know. Uh, but uh, it's something that has to be attached either to the building structure or this or to this uh, first uh, curtain wall. Uh, we're going to attach it to this first curtain wall because I think it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be easier. Okay. But um, uh, now we have to. Uh, there is nothing like that in Revit by default. Uh, so we have to do it by using those uh, component uh, modeling plates. So to do this, we have to look at, so this is what we have done so far. Okay, so we have the first uh, layer. It's uh, hanging from this element that is attached, that is attached to the structure. This uh, complete slab is resting on this uh, beam, right, the steel beam, okay? And now we need to do this. So as you can see, we have this element and this element is like uh, holding the a second structure for the second, for the double skin. And then on, the, on that element, we can place uh, these Okay, the floor that we have between these two slabs, it's something like that. It's a perforated steel plate. Okay, so it's something like this. We can step on it. And uh, so that's the thing that we use for maintenance. Okay, so it doesn't have to be a floor. It's something that is uh, very light, it's perforated, uh, but we can walk here. So we need to place this 
uh, on the first scheme in that part of the same scheme of the of that uh, double scheme fashat that we are uh, we are creating. Okay. But that's the material that we are going to uh, we are going to use. And this is uh, the material that we have here. Okay. And this part is, is the steel floor, perforated floor that we're going to use. Well, I think it's enough for today because it's the first day after the, the break. Uh, we have created a curtain wall, but trying to understand uh, what it takes uh, to create a curtain wall. In Revit, it's very easy. We only have to go to architecture, wall, uh, storefront, and uh, there you go, okay? So this, in the reality, is quite complicated. In Revit, everything floats. You don't have to hold anything. But if we want to place this element in a building, uh, we need to uh, be aware of all these things. First, that it's hanging, so it's not resting on the slab. There is a gap between the curtain wall and the slab. It can be one inch, two inches. So on that gap, we have those elements. Those elements are fixed to the concrete element. And then they have enough space uh, for the movement, the whole movement. Uh, we need to create an opaque uh, curtain panel to hide all this, because this is not something nice. We have to hide, we have to hide the steel structure. And we have to hide the concrete slab. So that way we have these opaque panels here. And those opaque panels, they are hiding all these elements that we need, uh, that uh, small element uh, that we need to fix or to hold the, the mullions. Okay. So this is what it takes to uh, work with, uh, uh, with curtain walls. And uh, next time or next Friday, I will show you how to do the, the double skin. And with the double skin, okay, so this is what we have done so far. This first layer of uh, curtain walls. Then we need all these substructure uh, we have this floor here, and then we will create all the shading devices, and finally, the exterior fitting or the second layer of that double skin facade. And for this double skin facade, we're going to do something different. We're going to work with Revit families, and we're going to try to adapt the shape. Let me show you some example. Okay, so if we want to do something a little crazy uh, like this, uh, then we will have to work with Revit families. And I'll introduce you to some features of parametric design. Okay, so it's not just another flat uh, curtain wall. Uh, we will try to do something fun uh, with uh, weird shapes uh, for the second skin uh, facade. So I'll show you how to do it. And it's not that difficult. It's uh, easier uh, than it seems. Okay, but uh, creating those uh, weird shapes for this for the double skin fashat is fun. And uh, okay, so we want to do something like that. Uh, I'll show you how to do it with uh, with uh, some uh, rabbit families. Let's see what happens. 